So January 27th, 1945, that was the day that the Auschwitz concentration camp was liberated by German, liberated from the German Nazis. On this day, the United Nations urges every member state to honor the victims of the Holocaust and the victims of Nazism to develop educational programs to help prevent future genocides. Six million European Jews, millions of other people were killed by the Nazis and their collaborators during the Holocaust, some one and a half million of them were children. Mm. This year's remembrance theme is memory, dignity, and justice to remember the victims, safeguard the historical record, challenge the distortion of history often expressed in contemporary anti-Semitism. Around the world, Holocaust survivors and politicians warned about the resurgence of anti-Semitism and Holocaust denial that has gained traction and exacerbated hatred online, especially during the coronavirus. President Biden, Vice President Harris met with Holocaust survivors and they issued a statement. And there's not many Holocaust survivors left. Left, I, I know. Right. I grew up no, uh, like knowing of a lot of... Whoever uh, is left as a Holocaust survivor was a child. A child. A child sure. who yeah. survived. Yeah. Um, and, what, and, what, and what President Biden and Vice President Harris said today in a statement, today and every day we have a moral obligation to honor the victims, learn from the survivors, pay tribute to the rescuers, and carry forth the lessons of last century's most heinous crime. From the streets of Charlottesville, Virginia, to a synagogue in Colleyville, Texas, which was just last week, mm -hmm. we are continually and painfully reminded that hate doesn't go away, it just hides. Yeah. The president also stressed the need for the international community to push back against attempts to ignore, dis deny, distort, revise history about the Holocaust, he referenced the United Nations resolution adapted last week that condemned Holocaust denial. Now, due to the pandemic, many International Holocaust Remembrance Day events were being held online this year. A small ceremony, however, did take place at the site of the former Auschwitz death camp. European Parliament lawmakers listened to a 100-year-old Holocaust survivor, Margot Friedlander. You see it? Wow. I mean, she's 100 she's now. 100. She must have been a child. Yeah. She was arrested in 1944 and brought to what is now the Czech Republic. A year before, her mother, her brother, her entire family were deported to Auschwitz, where they were all killed. Jeez. So she is the lone surviving uh, member of the family. She said, we must be vigilant and not look the other way as we did then. Hatred, racism, and anti-Semitism must not be the last word in history. Now, Charles Michael, the head of the EU Council, said with each passing year, the Shoah, which is Hebrew for the catastrophe, mm -hmm. And it particularly refers when anyone says Shoah, in, at least in Hebrew, they're referencing the Holocaust. The Holocaust. They're not referencing any other catastrophe. Mm -hmm. uh, the Shoah inches towards becoming a historical event because there's nobody who's going to be alive who actually yeah. witnessed it. More and more distant, more and more abstract, especially, especially in the eyes of the younger generations. This is why the more the years go by, the more important commemorations become. Mm -hmm. Now, to tackle the Holocaust, the uh, United Nations, U UNESCO, and the World Jewish Congress launched a partnership today with TikTok. According to statistics, one in five TikTok videos either deny or distort what happened in the Holocaust. What? 17% of content related to Holocaust on TikTok either denies that it ever happened or distorts what actually happened and who the hell are these well people and, that are and doing what it? the unesco and the world jewish congress are saying is that all online platforms must take responsibility for the spread of hate speech by yes. promoting reliable sources of information in italy members of the jewish community and lawmakers gathered in rome's ghetto to lay a wreath on the site where more than a thousand people were rounded up and deported uh and there was there's an actual jewish ghetto in mm -hmm. all the cities of Europe because mm -hmm. the Jews were just concentrated in there. Mm -hmm. And then once they were all concentrated in there, the Nazis just came in and took them all. Jeez. So uh, where, they were, where they were concentrated, uh, 1,000 people rounded up and deported on October 16th, 1943, all died. Mm. In Albania, the only country that can, in Europe, of all of the countries, whether Western or Eastern Europe, 
the only country that can say that they were righteous for Jews during the Holocaust. Albanians saved all the Jews. Mm. You know who also did, by the way? Hmm. Morocco. Really? Yes, Morocco wow. saved all their Jews as well. The, um, when the Nazis came to Morocco, the king of Morocco is very famous, the general oh, of the yeah, Nazis yeah, yeah. came uh -huh. to Morocco and, and he told the king, you have to give us all your Jews. We're taking them away. And the king said, there's no Jews here, just Moroccans. Wow. You know, which, wow. which goes back to, yeah. you know, what we were talking about the other day. So the king stood up. Yeah. You know. So any uh, event, Albania uh, is, uh, according to Foreign Minister Ulta Jaku, uh, is earning a place amongst the righteous amongst nations. During World War II, Albania was the only country where no Jews were killed or handed over to the Nazis in Europe. And their numbers increased from before the war to after the war. The population, Jewish population increased. Albanians protected Jewish residents, helped Jews who fled from Germany, Austria, and other countries by either smuggling them abroad or hiding them. Now Yad Vashem, which is the Holocaust Memorial in Jerusalem, mm -hmm. and there's lots of Holocaust Memorials all over the world, but this one's in Jerusalem, and the Conference on Jewish Material Claims Against Germany teamed up to highlight the stories of righteous rescuers. You know what a righteous rescuer is? What? That's a non-Jewish person who went out of their way to save a Jewish person during the war. Oh, wow. Right. So the most famous one, because they made a movie of him, mm -hmm. is Oscar Schindler from Schindler's List. Oh, yeah. Right. So he, yeah. was, he was a German, he wasn't Jewish, and he went out of his way and oh, saved okay. thousands of Jews yeah. uh, from execution. Now, over, over the 60 years, Yad Vashem has recognized about 28,000 people from 50 different countries as righteous rescuers. People who risked their life mm -hmm. Which is to huge. save somebody else's yeah. life, who what, and they were not Jewish. Right. Non-Jews who yeah. risked their life to save a Jewish That's life. That's big. They still receive hundreds of applications each year to honor others. They're all mostly dead posthumously. Yeah. Of all the rescuers still alive today, most helped their parents as children or teenagers. So of the righteous, the people who are righteous rescuers were children of parents who were righteous mm -hmm. rescuers. Yeah. Because it was full families that would hide Jews in their homes. The organization believes about 200 of them are still alive and they're all in Europe. So that is what's going on with Holocaust Remembrance Day today. Thanks for watching. For more Bradshaw Live, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.